Oi! So welcome to sunny Queensland. Um, we've got a bit of string of uh, bad weather at the moment. Uh, there's a cyclone being a menace further up north. And so we're feeling it here in Brisbane where I live. Uh, it's not doing, luckily enough, not doing too much damage here in Brisbane. It's a bit dicey up north, I believe. But um, so far so good here, just, just been wet like this for the last couple of days. Uh, which is good movie watching weather. So tonight, I'm going to um, uh, watch a couple of movies, a couple of horrors man, it's been too long. I'm just out in the park at the moment, it's pretty flooded. You can probably see my feet there. It's all pretty, pretty squelchy around the place. Um, yeah, so uh, later tonight I'm going to watch a couple of films which I'm inviting you guys to come and uh, hear what I have to say about them later. Um, but other than that, yeah, I'm just sort of digging this weather for the moment. As long as it doesn't cause any real problems or damage, I'm all for this sort of weather. It's, it's perfect for watching movies. I'm going to set up a big screen. I've got a projector and a big screen, so I'm going to set that up. Oh, there goes a thong. Where are we? Goodness me. So I'll set up a projector and a big screen tonight. And um, I don't know what I'll watch. I've got a bunch of stuff. We'll check it out. Maybe maybe Trimer? I don't know. I'm not really sure. But yeah, so I'll keep making a mess of myself around here in the park and getting wet. And then the next time you see me, I'll be nice and dry at home watching videos. I'll see you tonight, guys. There you go. That's what it's been like. White skies the last few days. White skies. And all the Drains are full of water. Kind of nice. As long as it stays like this, we'll be cool. Hey guys. So yeah, it's night time now. Um, the rain's pretty well eased off, which is good. And I've decided I'm going to open up finally. I've had this for a while. This uh, Blind Dead collection. There's four films there. Um... So I might start watching these tonight. As you can see, I've set up the screen behind me here. Um, it doesn't look as good because I've got the light on up the top, but once the lights roll off, it'll be uh, pretty awesome. Uh, nice home cinema type thing, got the projector going. So I'm gonna watch uh, Tombs of the Blind Deb, first of all. There's four in the series. Um, and look, let's be honest, I'll probably watch two. If I'm lucky, I might make it to three if I don't fall asleep. It'll be a pretty bit of a stretch if I actually watch all four tonight. But anyway, I'm going to start with this one and I'll let you know what I think. Yeah, so I just finished watching um, Tombs of the Blind Dead, the first in the Blind Dead series. Um, I really dug this one. Uh, it, was, it was quite enjoyable. It's the kind of film, um, if it's not for everyone, you sort of need to be a fan of slow burners and sort of Euro horror or be familiar with a bit of Euro horror before you delve uh, headfirst into this one. Um, you know, if you're not used to that sort of thing, it's, it's, it's you know, I think it's from 71 and it's it got that 70s Euro horror pace to it, which I love, but um, I know that's not for everyone. So expect something that is uh, a bit of a slow burner, not a whole lot of gore, a little bit of uh, blood and guts here and, here and there, but uh, fairly sparsely. Um, these sort of films, and this one in particular, which is, is why I really dug it, um, have got great atmosphere, and this one is creepy as hell. Um, so, really, the best things about this film was the atmosphere, the creepiness, um, these uh, bl the blind dead, or the knights as they were. I'll give you a synopsis in a sec. The knights, uh, they look awesome. And when they are, you know, traveling in a pack on horses it's even more spectacular so um they're awesome and uh i mean the european women don't hurt the film either let's be honest but um basically it's about uh a, a couple that uh go on a little journey with another lady who hitches a ride with them on a, on a train and uh there's a bit of sexual tension one of the women jump off and run away to this uh uh, village sort of uh, that's in ruins and she spends the night there and here come the these knights that are into 
satanic rituals. They've you know been dead for for centuries, and uh, they rise up from their grave and kill her uh, and do a bit more killing along the way. But um, yeah, I mean the story is what it is. It's it's the story itself is uh, would be nothing without the atmosphere uh, that the director has created. Uh, but man, I dug it, really did enjoy it. Uh, it won't be for everyone though. But if you like that sort of thing, then it's one of your better Euro horrors. Um, second one now, Return of the Evil Dead, which is 70, 1973. So I'm reading the back, we'll see if this is as good. It's, they may be up in the, the gore in this perhaps, which could be a good or bad thing. Anyway, we'll see in a sec. Oh, well, there you go. Just finished watching uh, Return of the Evil Dead. <clears throat> Didn't enjoy this as much as the first. Um, the backstory, it, it started off with the backstory and it, that was cool. I, I kind of enjoyed the start of this film. It lost me a bit in the middle. I started losing interest, but then I, I did actually like the climax. The sort of, it was a bit of an anticlimactic climax, but I did enjoy it anyway. Um, basically, the story is basically, it's the same thing. Um, these knights um, are executed centuries ago. In the first story, they said their eyes got pecked out by crows. In this one, they had um, one of the villages where that they were um, attacking. Um, a bunch of the the guy um, the villagers burnt their eyes out in this one. So that was the story in this that they got their eyes burnt out. Anyway, uh, in this one, basically the knights all rise from the dead. It must be the anniversary night, I think it was, where the, the village where they, um, the villagers that had burnt their eyes out, they went back to that village and uh, attacked them basically. And they were having a big um, celebration that night too, which I believe they were celebrating the killing of these guys centuries ago. So that's your basic premise. And then from there, it actually, uh, there's big battle scenes between the knights and the villagers, which kind of got a bit boring after a while because they dragged on until finally um, some of the villagers that are left all get held up in a big church and it turns a bit more Night of the Living Dead, like how they're in that the house in Night of the Living Dead. It's a bit like that. Um, so the middle bit sort of lost me. I, I, got, I did It did drag a bit, maybe because I'd watched the first one beforehand and I'd already got a fill of The Blind Dead. But... Um, like the start of this film, I like the backstory they put forward, and and like I said, I like the anticlimactic climax. Um, but yeah, look, I'm not going to be able to keep going. I'm getting tired. I knew this would happen. So um, to be continued one day. I've got two more to watch. I think I've got Night of the Seagulls, which I want to watch because I kind of like the name of it. And what's the other one? The Ghost Galley, and I kind of like the sound of that too. So I'll watch them some other time. But um, yeah, definitely get into it if you haven't seen these Blind Dead movies. They're worth a watch for sure. Um, they are very cool, the Blind Dead themselves. Um, the, the costumes are very, very cool. And when they're on horseback, I've said this before, it's even cooler. So yeah, that's that's about it. Like I said, the rain's actually stopped now. So I reckon, I reckon it's all done, done and dusted, this cyclone, which is good. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.